Welcome back to Roughing It. A few hours drive up the coast, and we were in Charleston. You will immediately find a motif of pineapples throughout the city. There are many stories behind the origins of this, but they all point to it as a symbol of hospitality. Charleston has some restrictions for dogs on a few places. Tip number one. Bring Fido is an app and website with a wealth of information concerning pet-friendly places. Travel over the bridge to Mount Pleasant and you'll find the Memorial Waterfront Park and Fort Sumter don't allow pets. Schuyler never saw where the Southern forces fired the first shots of the Civil War from Fort Sumter and forever changed the South. But she did see where Edgar Allan Poe was stationed. The other famed fort in Charleston traded books for bullets and Schuyler was allowed to explore. Fort Moultrie is now a library named after noted writer Edgar Allan Poe, whose life and work were heavily influenced by his time at the fort. Open here I flung the shutter. And speaking of books, tip number two. For all you readers, the Kindle or Kindle app is a great way to cut down on weight and space in the car. Just down the street is Sullivan's Island Lighthouse. An engineering feat, this modern monolith has a unique triangular structure built to withstand winds of 125 miles per hour. Head further north to another national park and you'll find yourself on Snee Farm, a small representation of the vast Pinckney Plantation. Step inside the house and you'll learn more about the Pinckney family and how life was in colonial times. Charles Pinckney, fighter and POW of the Revolutionary War, prominent lawyer and politician, signer of the Declaration of Independence, also a slave owner. Schuyler reserved judgment and instead enjoyed the 28 acres and nature trail. Once a land of farming and toil, now a peaceful preserve. The day was ending and it was time to turn in. Oh, oh God, what is that? Okay, look. No one ever said traveling around the country on a very low budget was going to be easy. Flying cockroaches are part of the fun. North Carolina State Line. North Carolina. The Smoky Mountains, the Outer Banks, the place the Wright brothers first took flight. Yeah, we didn't see any of it. Time was bearing down on us because I had prolonged our visit in Beaufort. We picked the fastest, least inspiring route through the state. Tip number three, nothing is uninspiring on the road. Even if you're not venturing to the most well-known spots, you can make the fun wherever you go. Technology can also help. Road Trippers is an app that helps you discover things around you or on the way. We are in North Carolina. We're close to the border of Virginia right now. We're at a dog run so that Skyler can get some exercise. We've just kind of blown through North Carolina. We're going to bypass a lot of the stuff. A lot of the cool stuff in North Carolina is, is west anyway in the mountains. And we're heading north, not west. At least, not west yet. We found the Roanoke Canal Trail and Museum using the Road Tripper app. The Roanoke Canal is an interesting exercise in hydro power engineering. At 200 years old, it had been important for trade as a means of electricity and source of water. We enjoyed a hike along the Roanoke River before pushing north. There's a lot to love about Virginia, starting with their successful ad slogan, Virginia requires that the front license plate be attached, so that's what I'm doing. Well, I don't know if this is good luck or not, but it's a wounded ladybug. 
bug as I'm reattaching my license plate. Good omen or not, in a state for lovers, we would learn about war. Free of charge, dog friendly, and a piece of the nation's history. The Civil War Trail spans five states and takes you on a journey that shows you the significant events that shaped the South. Starting with Roanoke, I decided we would follow it. Petersburg National Battlefield. At the Petersburg Visitor Center, you can find out how the soldiers lived, the texture of their clothing, what armaments they used, what they ate, and most importantly, what they drank, coffee. It is said that coffee fueled the Civil War. By all accounts, the most important thing to a soldier was coffee. I can definitely relate. Five ways to make coffee on the road. The instant. The pour over. You can also wet the filter beforehand to help it keep its shape. The press. Jetboil makes a French press accessory. The trap. The Civil War style. Take the beans, crush them with a spoon or preferably the butt of your rifle, boil them in water over a fire, watch the hair, facial or otherwise, drink it, Keep the remnants for chewing on later while you march. Condensed or powdered milk and travel packets of sugar or honey stay well preserved on the road. It's good, it's good, it's good, it's good. Talk to the experts and get a demonstration of the artillery of the day. I'm gonna start employing this round when the enemy is about 450 yards away, because that's too close, because we are facing Infantrymen with thousand yard battle rifles. Here during the siege of Petersburg, they averaged 16 fatalities by head wound per day. Per day. Load shell, 900 yards. Hey. It's okay. The dogs did not like the cannon. <laughs> yeah. Let's slip the dogs of war. Not these dogs. Learn more about the nine and a half month long siege of Petersburg as you explore the battlegrounds at will. If I had been in the Civil War, I pretty much would have soiled myself with fear every day. Just, just hearing one cannon go off. Uh, Skylar and I wouldn't have made it. Just imagine there could be rebels in there, or if you're a rebel, there could be Yankees in there. It's incredible valor, incredible bit bravery from both sides. Doesn't matter why you're fighting, just being in the fight itself. Oh my God. The place feels ghostly. <sighs> just went off again. Whew. That that definitely uh, gets your heart going. There's kind of a spooky quality to this, to this area. We are on the tour road of Petersburg Battle. That forest is beautiful and probably full of ticks. Pests didn't just bother us. Many letters and diaries from the Civil War speak to the ticks and chiggers that constantly plague them. There's also a driving loop to various noteworthy sites. Walk around to see the armaments displayed. It's almost like during the Civil War, they went backwards with their tactics and forward with their technology, and that is what created such a gory war. During the Revolutionary War, you had like farm boys picking off redcoats 
from the woods, which they knew very well, so they had the advantage of knowing the terrain, almost a hundred years later, they abandoned those tactics because it was dishonorable. It was more honorable to charge into gunfire. And yet it was guerrilla tactics and ambushes that won the Revolutionary War. And we didn't have as good, or I shouldn't say we, they didn't have as good of technology. That is a trumpet. Richmond, Virginia. First, the nation's capital during the Revolutionary War, then the Confederate capital during the Civil War. Now, the capital of Virginia, Richmond is a stately place. It also signifies how subjective history can be. With some controversy, many of the monuments celebrate key Confederate figures of the Civil War. Stonewall Jackson, a soldier and patriot. However, there are also civil rights and colonial monuments. Many presidents were from this state. Many famous people. Washington was from Virginia. Thomas Jefferson was from Virginia. Look at this guard dog guarding the mansion, the executive mansion. Very nice. Making friends with the executive mansion. Guard dog. Moving on. While the Civil War had a heavy hand in shaping the South, so did colonial times. The pre-revolutionary Kenmore Plantation was the home of George Washington's sister, Betty. We also made a stop at Ferry Farm where George Washington grew up. At Fredericksburg National Park, we found our pack. Hi, Mike Glover, at Fredericksburg. Uh, my name's Jeff, I'll be your guy today. Uh, Burnside says, that he expects to be here in about early December, say December. We took the sunken road guided tour of the battle to learn more. Unlike her classmates, Skylar did not prove to be the most attentive student. Civil War bullet holes at Fredericksburg. 20,000 soldiers died in this region. Wow. A lot of human beings dead. The Battle of Fredericksburg was a massacre, with the Confederates having the advantage. It seems to just go on forever. The amount of grave markers is a staggering sight. Better on the ridge. A serious advantage. You can see the house right there, the Innes house. Yep. Confederate artillery, look, I mean, they would have just if you imagine there was nothing here, no trees, no cover, just a field, we would have just had wide open space to completely destroy the Union Army with cannonballs. The most striking story of all was of Richard Kirkland. As the fighting dragged on for days, wounded Union soldiers were left on the battlefield to die. Kirkland, a Confederate soldier on the opposing side, risked his life to bring Union soldiers water during lulls in the battle. He was not allowed to carry a white flag and could have easily been shot to bring his enemy water. We had a few more stops to make before crossing the Potomac River. Find out what it is in next episode. <laughs>